we are in Africa. And African men are potentially polygamous, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> and for that reason, there is no need of information. When you marry an African woman, she must know the second one is on the way. The third one is on the way. The fourth one is on the way, Mr. Speaker. This is Africa, Mr. Speaker. Oh, God, help us. It's going to safeguard your family, your property, and everything else. Because we've seen cases where a husband dies, and then two or three more women come up, claiming for properties, coming with children, just because nobody was given any notification. The person who conceived this thing in an African setting, that when you want to marry, you must notify another interested party, and that party is interested negatively. <laughs> Who was notified? Who was notified when they were getting married? Chair Dawoodi never consulted anybody. Solomon. Solomon never consulted anybody. It is the Old Testament. Will as many are as an opinion say aye? aye. And will as many are a opinion say nay? The eyes have it. Well, that may be the case, but the law does reckon that only the Islamic and customary marriages are potentially polygamous. So the freedom to acquire more wives, unfortunately, does not apply to those who have entered into Christian and Hindu marriages, for example, just as it were in the Marriage Act of 1902. Those who are monogamous do not have the liberty to become polygamous just because the bill has become law. If they are monogamous and they wish to become polygamous, they have to do the decent thing, which is to divorce the wife. And then the next one they marry will sign on the dotted line that they wish to be married in a polygamous or potentially polygamous union. However, a section of the male gender is now upbeat, believing that polygamy has now been endorsed for every man. They are thinking that uh, polygamy was brought in last night. Kwanza kama kuna watu ambayo wapendani ni mabibi. Na ukiwajulisha kwanza ndo watakuangaisha mbaya sana. Sasa mi naona, hata hii ni kama tu haleluya. Kwa sababu, tumepata afueni. Walikuwa metutayarishia nyundo. Kwamba waki, ikipitishu watu atibaka tuwaambie. Naliskuru, kwa hiyo manenu wabungu wa maipitisha sababu wanawake wana, wametutumbua ya kutosha. In fact, I think the people who have won in that respect is women. Because now, a marriage will either be polygamous, potentially polygamous or monogamous. It is not like now when the power whether to contract or not contract a polygamous union lies with the man. The woman gets to sign on the dotted line as to what kind of relationship that she wants. The clause that penalized a false promise to marry was also deleted. So now a promise to marry is not binding. One should have the right to walk out of it if they feel that it's not taking them anywhere if they feel it's not the right person. After all, even after you've been married, you can divorce if the marriage is not you know, getting anywhere, of course, subject to the grounds that have been stated in the law. But family lawyer Judith Ongori is uncomfortable with the deletion of the provision that granted aggrieved parties leeway to seek damages if they were duped into believing that they would be married. Can you imagine the case of a man, for example, I give this in the morning, he goes overseas and leaves a woman betrothed to him here and stays overseas keeping on saying, you know, I'll come and marry you, I'll come and marry you. And then he shows up at Jomo Kenyatta Airport 10 years later with another family. Surely, isn't that the kind of promise to marry that should be, whose, whose breach should be, you know, um, should, should be penalized in terms of damages? I give them the example that uh, other men have given us in workshops and elsewhere about the marriage bill, that you could take somebody to college on the basis that they have promised to marry you. And on the day they graduate, they decide they don't want you anymore. Should you not be entitled to recover damages? Why men are jittery is because these people want to take our wealth. You know what? You get together when you have nothing. I mean, in a lot of the stories you hear, and they are, tr they are true stories, the guy just has a bachelor's pad. He doesn't even have a stool, you know, to sit on. I'm very serious. I mean, people sit on boxes. The boxes with which, you know, he buys a music system, because usually one of the first things he buys is a music system. A lot of people said there was even nowhere to sit. And if anyone seeks to stop a marriage, only a written notice of objection may work in their favor. That would prevent such scenes, <laughs> which Tangori believes are often futile. You know, even if you stop it, surely, I mean, you don't get the guy back. You get 
an enemy. Oh yeah. The amended bill, however, has no clause touching on the Kamwe state unions, which family law experts had hoped would be properly addressed in the new law. In that case, anyway, I don't think it's possible to wish away cohabitation. It's, 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 it's still there, you know, it's still over, overarching where a husband and wife, where a man and a woman have been living together and presenting, presenting themselves as a, a couple. There is, however, an opportunity to amend the marriage bill once it becomes law after six months. Sylvia Chabet, Citizen Weekend.